Hey everyone and welcome to a video how I'm going to explain how to use a simple menu screen for Visual Basic C Sharp. So this is what our actual menu screen looks like first off. So you have play games, options and high scores. So you click on play game, it brings you here. Options brings you to the options menu and high score brings you to the high score thing. So basically that's what the code does and I'm going to show you how it's done. So first off, you have constant byte, which you assign menu is equal to zero, play game is equal to one, game over two, high score three, options four. And then you have your current screen, which you want to set to menu. So like when the game starts, you want it to start in the menu screen. So it starts here. If I change this to play game, it starts in the play game menu. See? So it's pretty easy how it's done. So I'll just go over the code first. So I have a texture for all of the buttons, high score, options, play games. I have a button class, play game button, options button, high score button, screen width, screen height, and a background image, which I made myself. And I'll give you all the code to download this. So this will all be downloadable, all this code. So I'm just going to explain it first. Most of it is uh, commented pretty heavily, so it shouldn't be too hard to understand if you download it. So this is everything we load in here, just loading in the images, you're here on the right. Um, assigning the rectangle for the button, the width and the height, the location, and loading it in. Um, the update menu, this is how you get the mouse, the state of your mouse, like its position or whatever. So you have mouse state is equal to mouse dot get state case is equal to keyboard dot get state for keyboard input. So this is where it actually begins how you swap between scenes. So you have a switch statement like this. You have a switch and you put in your current scene. So first it's menu. So this will switch between whatever screen we're in. So you have case menu and basically everything you want to happen in the menu screen you put here. So for this one you have the play button, play game button, options button, high score button all in the menu screen. And it takes in a vector 2 which is the mouse's X and Y and it checks if the mouse state is not equal to the previous mouse state and the mouse left button is pressed then it gives you the current screen equal to play game screen so basically what that does is if your mouse is within the width and height and position of this and the left mouse button is clicked it brings you to this screen and likewise for the options and the high score it's basically the exact same code and you assign the current scene screen equal to whatever you want followed by a break at the very end. So say you do it for the play game scene, it'll take you straight down here to the case where you play your game. So basically what you want to happen when you play your game goes all inside here, followed by a break at the end. And then outside of all this switch statement, you have the previous mouse state is equal to mouse state, and based that update game time. And it's basically the exact same for the draw. You have the switch statement in there and the exact same cases, menu, options, high score, play game, and the exact same thing happens. What you want to draw in the menu screen, you put in it, followed by a break. You want to draw in a play a game, high score options is all in there, followed by a break. And sprite batch dot end. So that's pretty simple. Um I'll get into the button class now that I've made. So the button has a few things and it. it has its the rectangle for the button, if it's clicked, if it's available, and if the image is false or not. So you see this is the basic constructor for the button. If nothing is given for the button, it will automatically assign the position, like it's the rectangle size, weight and height, whether it's clicked or not, and if it's available. And this is the overloaded constructor for it, which you pass through a rectangle and whether it's available or not. And what I mean by available is if I go down here, where I initialize the buttons yeah if I was to make that like available equal to false like this I think they should be oh the game is still running it should be like grayed out kind of no they're not <laughs> I must not have the code in for that but I can add that in like if it's uh, an issue or anything so yeah, so that's basically all the code there is to it. Um, I think it's actually here. Did I get it? 
yeah, if the high score one is false, see, you can't click on it. I'm actually clicking on it now. And you can't actually go into it unless it's true. So it's handy if you ever want to do something like that, like an unlock. Like if you want to unlock the menu, you can just do it. If the button is false, change the color to be like a little bit darker or something. And then once you unlock it, set it equal to true so that you can actually go and click on it and go into the menu. So that's how that works. And then in our load content for it, you just pass through what it is and the name. So image is equal to content load texture two D and name, which is done in here. Uh, here, high score button dot load content, which is our content manager, and then the name of it, which is high scores, or whichever. And for our update, we take in a mouse position vector two, and we check if the mouse's x is greater than or equal to the rectangle's x, which is the very top left. And the mouse position x is less than the x position plus the width, which is the top left to the top right. And then we check and make sure the y position is greater than the y, which is the top left. And it's less than or equal to the y plus the height, which is the bottom left. So when you combine all of that together, it makes sure that your mouse is actually inside the square. And if it is, click this equal to true. Else click this equal to false, and if not available, click this equal to false, return clicked. So what you get back from that is a true or false statement, basically. So you have an if statement, if everything is pressed, then you do this. So if that returns true, if the play game button returns true, then you go and do this. So that's how that works. Um, the draw method is basically the same, you have color white, if available, if not available, color is equal to this one. And if clicked, color is equal to green. You know, just some simple code in there, like you can change the color. Um, for us, we actually swap through to the menu. So we wouldn't actually be changing the color or anything. You wouldn't see any of that. We're not using this right here. And these are just simple getters and setters for it. So if it's clicked, get return click, set clicked equals the value. And it's available and it's rectangle. Basically, that's all the code there is to it. It's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. I'm going to give you all of these stuff here. I'm going to upload the whole project. So if you ever want to add this into your game, uh, feel free to do it. I would love if you could just comment and say like it helped you. If you have any questions or anything regarding C Sharp, please let me know. And if you want any more tutorials, don't forget to drop a comment or anything. Thanks for watching and goodbye.